Hi, everybody. Welcome back to the Preservation Burlington TV show. Uh, it's been a while, and we've missed everybody and um, are looking forward to a whole bunch of really fun and interesting things. Um, I'm really excited because I have a, um, a friend and a, a guest today who's actually going to do our intro uh, and, and bring us in. Come on, wind us in, Patricia, because <laughs> Patricia was host of the show for a really long time. Two, three years, maybe? Yep. Yep, yeah. yep. And, and, and then somehow I got stuck with it. But. <laughs> welcome. Welcome to that. All righty. Well, here we go. I haven't done this intro in a few years, but let's go for it. Welcome to the Live at 525 Channel 17 Preservation Burlington TV show. <laughs> hey. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. So... Preservation Burlington is a 501c3 nonprofit organization whose mission is to preserve and protect historic architecture and the livability of our neighborhoods through education and advocacy. That was the mission statement when I served, anyway, as the host and on the board of Preservation Burlington. So there's that. And now, uh, as I said, Preservation Burlington is a nonprofit organization. What is the one thing that that um, a nonprofit always wants volunteers. Volunteers, people, we want volunteers. So <laughs> you can do something as little as half a day, maybe a homes tour. That's usually half a day when and if the home store comes back up. Mm -hmm. And uh, but hey, you're saying no, no, I've got more time. Committees, committees are both prongs of Preservation Burlington. Oh. I hear you, you're saying no, no. Not only could, do, do I have more time, I really dig the mission statement of Preservation Burlington. No worries. Talk to someone about becoming a board member. I have to say, that was some of my most interesting volunteer experience. And I've, I have a lot of volunteer experience, and that was some of the most interesting, uh, honestly, including hosting this show. Uh, so you never know. But now you're thinking, oh, wait, wait, wait. No, no, I don't really have that kind of time. That's all right. What's another thing nonprofits always want? Your money. We're happy to take your cash every day of the week, all day, every day. Anyway, and if you want to do that, I think uh, you'd have to go to preservationburlington.org, maybe. Yep, still. Yep. Yeah. So anyway, looking forward to having a chat tonight. I'm Patricia Arojo, and I'm actually the guest. Yay. Yay, yeah, 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 yeah. Perfect, Patricia. It's so better than I've ever done it. <laughs> you, know, you hit all the topics. That's everything we need and we're looking for and for people and active board members. And, you know, we've, as you know, over the years, we've had a lot of really great people mm. involved um, and we continue to. And we're always looking for for fresh blood and and new folks to come in and bring perspectives and, and different ideas to the board. So Absolutely. That's, always, that's great. So that that was really a terrific intro. Thank you. Um, I want to say, you know, like, I, as you know, like everything's been on hold for so long for so many people and we've been um, uh, struggling, but we've been managing, right? So we've had a, a, we've had a couple of cemetery tours that we've done. We've done a couple of things with the um, the old East End group that's up and running now, and um, they're great. So we've, we've been out and about and doing things. We haven't done the Homes Tour in a couple of years. I didn't um, think so. Yeah, this is, I know, and then we decided to scrap it this year. We're going to have a heavy June um, walking tour schedule, which is not instead of, but to make up for the lack of a Homes Tour this year. Um, so we're just doing a whole bunch of stuff, and getting back to the TV show is one of the really, um, for me, uh, fun things, and one of the things that I really enjoy doing. And when I saw all the cool stuff that you're doing on Facebook, I saw it, and you know, I know you've got a YouTube channel going on. I, I was like, oh my God, Patricia's, you know, because we have a history, and you know, over the show, we both enjoyed running the show for a bit, and I just. Thank you for being on as the inaugural guest <laughs> for kickstarting the Preservation Burlington TV show again. Well, thanks for inviting me. Yeah, well, I just want to, you know, I want more background. First of all, what have you been up to? Um, and when did you really start doing these, like, video tours of places? What have I been doing? Well, languishing during the pandemic, mm. really. Um, like so, all of us. Like all of us. And um, I had been thinking about a YouTube channel for some time, trying to figure out what would make sense. Um, 
I play piano, so I thought about having a piano channel. I'm still thinking about having a piano channel because why have one channel but you can have two and just kill yourself that way. <laughs> Um, but in the end, I decided finally just to bite the bullet and just try it with history because yeah. I love history and... Um, You're good at it. Oh, thank you. Thank you. I <laughs> appreciate that. Um, the, but what I usually hear about history is, is I hate it, I, lo I, dis I, uh, I dislike it, I don't like it. It's boring. It's boor oh, it's boring. If, it's I had, boring. if I had a nickel it's for boring. that one. Yeah. And um, I want people to realize it's actually pretty interesting and it's just about every one of us. Mm -hmm. that, that's what it is. Right. Yeah. It's so, other people's stories. Yes. You know, who did what before, and, you know, I mean, I find, yeah, I've, I've heard the, the same stuff, and, you know, like, and, you know, I'm an old house guy, so you read old houses, and I think about the carpenters that built them, or the masons that worked on them, or, you know, what were their lifestyles like, you know, and it just helps relate to, you know, again, languishing. We've all been through a similar experience recently. If you can look back and see that people in 18 you know, 19, 18, when they went through the influenza pandemic mm. here, yeah. you know, this has all sort of happened before, and what did those people experience, you know, and, and visiting these places makes it real. True, and, and when I'm visiting all these cemeteries, I know it's a lot of cemeteries right now, there's no snow on the ground, well, tomorrow, but uh, <laughs> today, no, and yesterday, no, but... Uh, um, when I'm walking, there are a lot of children's graves. I mean, all of those itty bitty graves, trip hazards with a lot of snow on the ground. Yeah. But, uh, you know, I talk about how they didn't have any vaccines, not a one. So they were dying from smallpox, they were dying from diphtheria, they were dying from tuberculosis, they were dying from, you name it, they were dying from it. Mm -hmm. You know, your family would have 10 kids and maybe four or five of them or more would even die. Yeah. So that's, there was one guy who was buried in the village cemetery in Colchester who lost nine of his children. Nine! I can't imagine the, the pain and suffering that no. family went through. No. So, um, so that's what I find, one of the things I find fascinating about cemeteries yeah. is visiting those places. I have a lot of cemetery <laughs> videos, yeah. including today I have a cemetery video. Oh, yeah, that's, that's really pertinent and great because, um, you know, we have cemeteries in Burlington. Yes. Right? And, we have, and we run the cemetery tours. We're doing some cleanup days. Mm. Um, they're, for, they're often neglected nowadays you know people don't use them like parks like they used to True. in the late 1800s you know so now they're just a sort of a place and we have to maintain them and it's on the back burner so people don't think about it so we try to raise awareness so you're doing the same thing so and also because there's a lot of history in cemeteries right oh, a ton of history I've uh, I have uh, filmed a lot of Medal of Honor recipients and uh, it's what's such that? it's such a what's what what uh, you said you filmed a lot of what recipients a medal of honor oh medal of honor recipients. Oh, yeah. yeah 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 I just discovered another one. I haven't filmed him yet because I haven't found his dog on grave yet. <laughs> and with a major snowstorm tomorrow, it's going to be put him back Hard. burn again. Yeah, right. So, uh, but I just discovered him, and it's it's such an honor to talk about the, the exploits of these men. The one uh, Theodore uh, Safford Peck, remember T. S. Peck Insurance? Yeah, mm. that guy. Um, his exploits were are worthy of a of a movie. Quite frankly, uh, you know, every time you think something's going to go really well for them, no, not so much. And uh, it was just a series of really awful mishaps, but he still, he, well, he survived. Persevered. Yes, absolutely. And he was in charge of the men. Mm. So, you know, he has had this brave extra front for his men on top yeah. of it. So crazy stuff like that is just fascinating how you can be so brave. So how did you, so uh, you mentioned you were thinking of a piano YouTube channel or, you know, a history YouTube channel. What was the kickoff? What, how did you start the history YouTube channel? I um, just decided to go out and film. I went to Lakeview Cemetery. So cemetery is just clearly sure. I, lo I love. So I went to the an overarching theme tonight. <laughs> it seems to be. So, um, so I decided to go there and film a year ago, February, actually. And um, admittedly, didn't like a single one I did. Oh, they were all terrible. Wow, such trash. Uh, deleted all of them. Oh, no. Every one of them. Oh, they were terrible. And then um, I went back and uh, filmed again uh, people I, I knew from the tours I had led. Mm -hmm. uh, so, um, and I found that that was another bumper crop of, bumper cr uh, crop of garbage. So, uh, deleted that stuff too. Mm -hmm. And, um, 
So what 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 so what didn't you like about them? What was what was the production value that you didn't like? Bad sound quality. Or? Oh, it had nothing to do with sound quality. It had everything to do with what I was saying. I thought it was just all garbage. Oh no! <laughs> really, it was just terrible. Um, part of the thing is uh, I can't remember stuff like I used to. Mm. I just there's a lot of dates, a lot of names, a lot of stuff like that. If I'm filming three to seven videos in a day, I can't remember stuff. Mm. So I, I, I just print, print it off and uh, flash read cards. it. Yeah, flashcards. Fla <laughs> except I'm holding my rig like this, mm. and that leaves my cane. Oh, right. So, yeah. Which is my pointer for those who watch my videos. Yeah. So, uh, so anyway, I, I, I now read stuff. I just read. Yeah. And it's just so much easier for me. So much. I mean, same here. Uh, like I'm very, I'm very not good at the walking tours. I've stepped in when I had to, but I can't remember anything. And then I read stuff, but then the pages are all backwards. I'm really even terrible at reading stuff. So, you know, I think, you know, none of our memories are what they used to be, right? Well, and I love the tours uh, for you for Ethan Allen. Well, Ethan Allen Homestead. That was from memory. Mm. Um, but um, I was also in my 20s. I was a kid then. Imagine that. <laughs> but the Preservation Burlington tours and my own tours, uh, I just had a sheaf of papers in my hands. And uh, I would tell people I can't remember this stuff. I mean, there's a lot. There's a lot of buildings on So those. much. Uh, so much stuff. So, so um, might as well just read it. Yep. Yeah. So, and then, you know, you read it for a while, then you learn some more stuff, and you add stuff that might not be in the sheaf of papers, because it's a sheaf, people. It's yeah, a sheaf. Things pop into your head because yes. you're reading stuff. It's a reminder. Listening to other tour guides who lead the tour, because uh, when I was trained to lead the PB tour, um, I was told I could add anything I wanted um, that would be correct and true, of course. <laughs> right. Unlike me, who makes things up. <laughs> <laughs> sometimes it just sounds like it, because sometimes it sounds so preposterous, it can't possibly be true. <laughs> but and that's is. the kind of history I love the most. Right, right, right. Yeah. Yeah. So so then you felt better. You felt more comfortable with a, a few of the latter ones. Yes, because uh, the end of May last year, I decided that I was going to upload every day of the week. Oh, shoot me. What was I thinking? What that? Yeah, what the heck? What the heck? I know. So if I only go out and get one video... Oh, that's not a that's not a waste. That is the next day's video. Mm. But if I can do, you know, five videos in a day, that's mm. that's five days of videos. So five visits to different places. Yeah, that's a lot of driving usually. Mm -hmm. um, although every now and then the buildings are right next to each other. It's fantastic. So and actually, if I could, if I could show, please uh, something. Yeah, yeah, pull um, some stuff up. So I drove down to. Um, Leicester, Vermont, which is south of Middlebury. Yep. I'm actually not even sure if it's still called Leicester, but these buildings are listed as in Leicester, Vermont. So, yeah. <laughs> so I went with Leicester. Uh, so uh, I lucked out that uh, two were right next to the, each other, hallelujah, and the other one was across the street. So I parked in one place and just walked oh, across great. Route 7, a busy street. Um, so I just want to uh, start with this one here. Yep. Um, I'm not going to show you the other two. One was a meeting house, and the other was a schoolhouse town hall that was built that way. Mm -hmm. Town hall is now separate from it. Okay. Um, but uh, anyway, this building that, that you see on camera now, this is known as the Stagecoach Inn mm. in Leicester, Vermont. And uh, so let me tell you right now that if you want to go see this place, do not follow Google Maps. Oh, my gosh. First of all, you want to do a street view mm -hmm. first to make sure you're actually looking at the same building. You're not. Uh, so don't do Google Maps. What you want to do is plug in Junction of Route 7 and Fern Road. I think Fern Road was the other one. And then you'll get to this place. Uh, so, mm -hmm. so, so follow my... I, I wouldn't Finding it was a challenge in the beginning. Well, it could have been if I would followed Google Maps. Mm -hmm. But um, so anyway, this building is, um, I don't know, 150, almost 200 years old, mm -hmm. well-built, it's clearly well built because um, as we look at the next photo of it, mm -hmm. wow, that bad paint job is not is the least of its worries. Look at those windows boarded up. Mm. So it's abandoned right now? I don't know if it's abandoned. I didn't actually step onto the property. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't want to trespass. <laughs> so I stood on the side of Fern Road, and, and that bit road's pretty busy too. Pictures. Uh, yeah. Well, taking pictures and filming from there. Yep. Um, so we can see it has a corrugated roof that's starting to rust. Mm -hmm. 
I'm hoping the roof stays intact. Apparently it has stenciling in there and all kinds of stuff. Wow. It was a stagecoach inn, and then it became a post office, a retail store, um, and then it became a private residence. Mm -hmm. and now the pictures, this is on the National Register of Historic Places. Mm -hmm. So, um, so it's a shame that it looks like this because, oh, and the, uh, let's see, is the next picture? I should have written down what was in there, which order this was. Um, oh, this, okay. I'm sure it's going to trigger your memory. Oh, yeah, here you go. Oh, yeah, the barn, the, building. the barn on this building, uh, you see the upper window is open mm -hmm. to that, so open to all the elements all year round. Now, the pictures I saw in line of this, it was leaning, and it's leaning, it's still leaning, and you can see the, the roof is bowed a bit on the on the eave is uh, mm -hmm. bowed a bit on the uh, right hand side. Yeah, yeah, it's pitching out a little bit, a little saddlebacked. Ah, great terms. Mm -hmm. I don't know all that stuff. <laughs> I point this stuff and say, it's, this is what it looks like. This bowed and that's not good. <laughs> right, right. It should be straight. That's a red flag. That's a red flag on a red barn. Mm -hmm. So, what's the history of this this building? So, what did you talk about when you were filming it? Well, it's fil what I was talking, what I was talking about was it was the stagecoach inn, and um, on, so the road that we see pictured right there, that is Route yep. Seven. Oh. What's, so what's interesting in the 1970s, this build, so this building used to face Route Seven, and then it was turned, mm -hmm. it was turned. Uh, 90 degree angle from Route 7, oh. looking at Ferndale and pushed back. Mm. So it's actually sitting on a brand, well, brand, brand new. It's not Relatively sitting on a, new. It's sitting on a, a concrete foundation, mm -hmm. um, which I was surprised when I first read that. How is, how is that? Did they lift it up? Well, they moved it. Yeah. And the reason they moved it was because it was blocking the view on uh, Ferndale for driving. Because uh, oh. you, you, you turn onto Route 7 or go across it. All right. So. Um, but it's such a shame. It's in such. It's it's tattered, really. It's it's um, it it needs a human to help it. Mm -hmm. It needs a lot of humans to help it with deep pockets. Mm -hmm. um, because you would know better than I. But I'm, I'm guessing that'd be very expensive to fix. Well, depending on what's wrong with it. Depending. Yeah. Right. Right. The extent of what you want to do with a building like that or adaptive reuse. You know. So, so that was one of three that were in a little pocket of. Oh, it's fantastic. Mm -hmm. I don't have those pictures. Mm -hmm. um, the across the street on the other side was a. A, a meeting house, and uh, that had some issues with windows. Not terrible issues yet, but if they don't work on it, it's going to be terrible. Yeah. I've seen terrible. It's not good. I know. And, and, you know, it's funny. I tell people that, you know, the old houses are, like you said, well-built. They, they withstand a lot. They can, they can contend with neglect for a really long time. They you can. Know, you know, w windows, for instance, can get really bad in 7 to 10, 15 years. And then they'll stay that bad for another 20, you know, before they fall apart, you know. So, you, you know, you could ignore it for 35 years. You don't want to, but if you want to, you know, so these, these buildings. So, so that, was, that was one you did. So um, what made you decide to go there? What, what popped Lester up in your mind as a place to go? Well, not so in much your, Lester. Your planning process for... I saw that this was a stagecoach inn. I thought, I want to film a stagecoach inn. Okay. Just like I want to film, film taverns. I find these buildings fascinating. Um, so do you Google taverns and you try to find, like, and, and see what comes up and what's, like, within our realm that's easy enough to get to? Is that how you, you do your research? No, actually. I, I typed in uh, National Register of Historic Places in uh, Vermont. Mm -hmm. And it comes up with all the counties and all the buildings that are on the National Register. So you scroll through those and yes, see Yes, I what. do. Oh, okay. And all three of those buildings are on the National Register. Mm -hmm. So, and then when they were grouped together, I could have done a, a little hallelujah dance. I, I may have done. I may have done the you end zone dance. You actually do a hallelujah <laughs> Yeah, yeah, I may have done that. Um, <laughs> Because it's it's so much easier. When I filmed these three buildings in Burlington, for instance, these um, the only house I remember is Minsner House. That's the only name I remember. In fact, I don't even remember what street they were on. <laughs> it's so sad. But they were this, this is like two weeks ago, too. They were clustered yeah, together. Boom, boom, boom. All Perfect. in a row. Perfect. It's like, oh, I'll film you and you and you, and I'm now I'm done. So you do. So when you film one, so that's one YouTube. Episode. Yes. Yeah, so, how long are your episodes? I know I've watched them, my thumb through. So, how long is a soup to nuts episode? A cemetery video can be 30 minutes. Uh -huh. My my camera, which is my cell phone, yep. um, gives me a warning when it hits 30 minutes, and now it doesn't actually stop filming. What happens is it. Um, 
it separates. Mm -hmm. So then I have to either knit them together, which is actually pretty easy, hallelujah. Mm -hmm. um, but I just let a, a video go to 30 minutes and then upload 30 minutes. So today's video is part five of my visit to the Village Cemetery in Shelburne, for instance, and tomorrow is part six because oh, okay. it's another 30, almost 30 minutes. For the same cemetery. Same, so same area several. of the same cemetery. Uh -huh. Oh, it's a beautiful thing, cemeteries. It's like three videos and, and I just, I'm just walking. Yeah. Doing a little bit of talking. I do talk about dates and if someone's still alive, if I happen to know a story. Yep. Um, but they're really just a stroll through a cemetery. Oh, that's great. Yeah. That's neat. Yeah. Pretty it's cool stuff. Fun. So it's like, so your phone gives you a warning. Like we just got a, um, this, this is just funny because you said that, you know, you could stitch them together and it doesn't actually just stop necessarily. But, um, you know, we got the 10 minute warning, which is plenty of time. But, you know, here, when we run out of time, the screen goes dark, mm -hmm. but we can still keep talking for as long as we want, and it records. So How cool is that? I happen to know that. Yeah, right? but oh. it's weird for the people watching at home because all of a sudden the, <laughs> the camera goes off, but they still hear us. And I've learned not to curse when the picture goes away because it's, you know, it's not good for... Oh, I strive not to curse ever on my channel. Oh, me uh, too. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so so, um, so you're, you're going into episode six with the cemetery, right? That's tomorrow's. Uh, tomorrow. Yep. Um, so what are a couple more of your favorites? Sure. Um, all right, so the next one you're gonna see is the, the absolute opposite of this. Oh no, that's the barn. There we go, that. Okay, yep. This, I, Beautiful think, you, I, building. I think you will enjoy the I story of this. I think I know where, where um, tell me where it is. I think I know Charlotte. where it is. Charlotte. Oh. It's in Charlotte yep. on uh, Church Hill Road. Two words, Church Hill. Yep. Um, so Church Hill Road is accessed by either end. I highly recommend you come in from the Route 7 side. Mm -hmm. And that's because if you use Google Maps, it will tell you you need to turn right onto Tavern Hill Road. Um, so I was driving, I had come in from, from uh, the side that's to the, from the right side of that building. Mm -hmm. So I had come in from that side and, and, and I was looking for Tavern Hill Road. Um, so I passed a couple of houses which are dwarfed by this building. And the thing is, as, you, as I passed the second house, the, um, this building just loomed. Mm -hmm. So have that experience. You're not gonna have it from the other side at right. all. Right. So this will be on your right-hand side as you're on um, Church Hill Road. So uh, there is no Tavern Hill Road. Google, uh, please, Google Maps, please. <laughs> There's no Tavern Hill Road. This is directly on Church Hill Road. Um, but it's called the Tavern on Mutton Hill. Mm -hmm. Now, there is a Mutton Hill Road to your left before you get to the tavern. Uh, this one has been fully restored. Mm -hmm. I read that the second floor had been a ballroom mm -hmm. in the day, back in the day. This used to be part of the uh, Stagecoach Road. So um, I don't know what shifted because uh, Route 7 mm -hmm. it, it was, is the Stagecoach. So, yeah. But, um, but this was built 1812, 1813, something like that. So a very old building. We can tell by looking at it, it's very old. Look at this beautiful double chimney with yeah, the parapet the double, between. This, it's, it's this, in New York, there's called stone enders because then the in, in between would be wood, but they'd have these big double chimneys on either end of the building. Wow. So I still kind of call them stone enders, even though they're not now because it's all brick, but it's got the double chimneys. It's, yeah. It's gorgeous. Um, <laughs> so stuff that you wouldn't hear about because I wouldn't talk about it in the video necessarily. <laughs> the back stuff. And what I ever have, it was like when, when I had my 50 subscribers, thank you video it was um, about some history books I like to use I, nobody liked that video nobody watched it I think eight people maybe oh there you go and a hundred but it, that's more than watch his show so that's that's great <laughs> don't say that no 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 uh, so when I hit a hundred subscribers um, I had a behind-the-scenes look of what it takes to put together one of these videos mm. so some things I was talking about was um, of um, I lost the original train of thought on that. Darn it! The whole the whole memory thing is is a problem. My fault. But uh, but some things to look out for. Some th so when if you're using Google Maps, sometimes it's just not going to get you where you want to go. Mm -hmm. For Union, the the Union Church in um, New Haven Junction, yep. uh, which doesn't actually exist anymore, but there is a sign saying uh, New Haven Junction. Um, Took me to Munger Street. It's not at Munger Street. It's not. And they, they took me to an empty lot with trees. Okay. Thank you, Google Maps. I hate yeah. you too. <laughs> right. Um, but um, but anyway. Something to be said for real maps. 
There is something you said about real maps, but I don't have a real map. Any well, I, I guess I, I do, know. but yeah. I, I like to use uh, Google Maps. But I knew where it was because I had already been there. I knew how to get there from one end, but not the other side. Yeah. So, uh, but I, I, I corrected that in Google Maps. You know, you can do that, right? You can correct it in Google Maps. No, I yeah, didn't know that. you can. Oh, wow. You can. You can just put in the actual location and so poof, when you're, there it is. Yeah, you're lost. You're like, no, this is where it is. This is where it is, right here. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, and then. Um, so yeah, let's let's have another another favorite. Oh, all right. So uh, sorry about the title, uh, but it's handy that this is the St. Augustine Cemetery in Montpelier, mm -hmm. uh, as you see, is part one. This is the yep. one of the entrances to it. Um, this was a request. I had I did get requests from people saying uh, I should go here, there, and everywhere. Mm. Which is fantastic. I actually have two requests I need to fulfill. I'm sorry if you're watching this show. You're working I'm, on it. I'm you're working, working on, on it. it. I'm working on it. <laughs> um, so I finally got there. I had people asking me, "Please tell me how this is." They have loved ones buried there. And they, I was told the grass was knee high. To, you know, it was uh, awful. Yeah, uh, neglected like most cemeteries. Like too many of them. But also some of them use uh, prison labor. Mm. And uh, the the uh, Green Mount Cemetery in uh, Montpelier uses prison labor, for mm. instance. And they didn't that high. That grass was insanely high. Mm -hmm. uh, but it was all cut when I got there. But um, I do talk about the the ground in cemeteries. So when other people visit, they're not shocked. Mm -hmm. This was the worst cemetery I've ever walked for the ground down in this lower part down oh. here. Every step I took, I felt I was going to break an ankle. Oh, it was no. that uneven. It was terrible. But it's beautiful. It's a it's a terraced cemetery. We don't really have those in Burlington. It's a step down and then down and then down again. Yeah, but I couldn't go down the lower portion because the the land was so the ground was so bad. I was really afraid I was mm -hmm. going to hurt myself. Sure. But the upper level of that was perfectly fine. Hmm. Go figure. The newer part. Yeah. The newer part. But there are um, I don't have that photo. But over to the right, uh, the upper the upper portion of that there is a a fairly large. Um, uh, um, grave marker, the kind that has the ball on top, so it's a cylinder and it's going to oh, okay, yeah. one of those kinds leaning. It's not going to be standing much longer. Oh no, it's just not. So, is there a group? Do you know? Did you find out whether there's a group that is trying to? Like, we have a cemetery commission in Burlington, you know, and I know they're they're put upon, but they they try and they're trying to maintain and, and get volunteers together and stuff like that. Is there something like that in Montpelier? I don't know. I know that. This is the St. Augustine Church still exists, mm -hmm. and um, they're responsible for this cemetery. Um, it's a beautiful cemetery, otherwise, but uh, you don't want to walk in the grass there. Whew, not at all. They probably but, wouldn't take an interview from you, would they? <laughs> I don't know. I uh, I never thought of that. Um, mm -hmm. Since we only have two minutes left, um, there's uh, I do uh, want to say for. Um, Historic. I, I may be able to be. Work, I may be working with an historical society come early summer, mm -hmm. which is very exciting. So I want to say to um, historical societies out there, particularly in Vermont, because right now I'm just in Vermont. I'm not mm -hmm. traveling out of state right now. But um, yeah. Not yet, but I will. I will, start, I will travel again. Um, if you'd like to work together, I would love to work with you. Film your, uh, film your, uh, your um, items, film uh, your photographs, mm -hmm. film stories about this stuff. You can talk all you want. I can shut my mouth. That's actually pretty easy sometimes, well, occasionally. But, and you can break it up into multiple, multiple episodes. Right. That too. But even better for you as a nonprofit, I can hook you up with uh, fundraisers on Instagram and tr and um, Facebook. Mm -hmm. It's uh, it's um, it runs for, on Instagram. It runs for thirty days, and you get all the money at the end. So again, give your um, YouTube channel. Traveling for history, one L and traveling. Traveling for history. And if you want to contact me about that, travelingforhistory at gmail dot com. I'd love to talk with you about that. And if I can ask for some help on something too. I want to film the interior of Burlington High School. I really do. They're going to tear down my high school, and shockingly enough, next year is my 40th high school reunion. Well, 40th. We'll work on that. We'll work on that for you. I want to thank you so much for being on the show. Thank I want you for everybody. Me. We're going to upload all your information for the YouTube channel and stuff on the Preservation Burlington website, um, so people can also follow up after this and get in touch with you. But and we'll get you into the high school. That'd be awesome. Patricia, thanks for coming on the show. Thanks I for really having me. Appreciate it. I this really, really do. It's so great to hear what you've been up to.
I'd like to thank everybody for tuning in to CCTV Live at 525, the Preservation Burlington Show. Remember, for more information on your house, your town, or that marker you always wanted, go to preservationburlington.org. And we'll see you next month, and the month after that, and the month after that, and the month after that. We're really looking forward to it. Thank you so much. Thanks, Patricia. Thank you.